Welcome to another episode of Mike Out. This time I'm at our country house and uh, it's the dark time of the year. Uh, but despite that I'm, uh, I'm uh, here outside and I've set up a halogen lamp, a 500 watt halogen lamp that is connected to a cord to our house, which is back there. Um, and yeah, so I'm on our property obviously. Um, but this is uh, one of the reasons why I want to continue making YouTube videos because I, I get motivated to do stuff. Otherwise, I may have just stayed in the house and you know fed the fire or whatever. So, in uh, um, yeah, what will this episode be about? I have actually I think uh, three episodes or something coming up, and uh, for for most of them I will be eating part of this ration pack. I received this one from uh, uh, the guy from the channel Weird Woods Ireland. So uh, please check it out in uh, whatever the card is. Uh, it's an Irish ration pack and it's a day pack so it's a 24 hour uh, pack with uh, a lot of goodies in it and uh, yeah, he wanted to give me this one, so uh, thank you very much. It will be super interesting. I've actually opened it already and checked out the contents because the Swedish Customs opened it and I guess it's uh, weird when the declaration says it's a ration pack or something. I don't know. Uh, anyway, that's the package. What does it say here? Um, I don't know how many calories there is in this one. Does it say? It probably says somewhere. 24 hour operational pack uh, menu G menu golf so this episode is going to be about the inch bag or more of a rant uh, regarding the inch bag and inch stands for I'm never coming home bag so it's obviously like a bug out bag but it's a bug out bag of all bug out bags I guess because you will never bug in again or return to where you came from so you're actually packing everything uh, you're going to have as a backpack on your back and then uh, leave I guess the inch uh, bag as a concept yeah why I call it a rant was that uh, I don't really think it's uh, it's feasible to pack everything and just hike out and then uh, live off uh, wherever you go um, they are usually pretty large so they are not uh, they are not something that you can manage like a bug out bag uh, like the bug out bag concept which is more uh, feasible or sensible in my opinion so I just want want you to check out my inch bag because obviously I have a, an inch bag or I actually have two inch bags these two inch bags uh, are what we as home guard soldiers have in our house. That is our, all our personal gear. I won't really go into exactly what they contain uh, or go through. You can actually find the, the, uh, uh, the manual online on the Swedish Defense Forces uh, website. They actually have the, the manuals for download. So it's no secret what they contain. but. Uh, for you know operational security whatever I don't really want to go into detail what my my bags contain and if shit would hit the fan and we be, would be called in and uh, well we could get called in uh, pretty rapidly and then we have to be at the garrison in in uh, in hours or actually in two hours or less maybe even. Um, so those are the bags that should be packed and ready to go. Uh, we just, uh, I would just uh, take my uniform on me and all the gear that I have in my pockets and uh, which is uh, quite a lot. Uh, we carry a lot of crap in our uniform these days. So um, yeah, that's uh, those two bags would be my inch bag because if really shit hit the fan and you would have to go then those are the ones I would have and I would have a, a bug out location and the bug out location for me when I get called in is the garrison where where we uh, have the rest of our gear 
but that's the thing. The rest of the gear for the whole company is, is there. And uh, that does not fit in these two small bags. Th these two small bags are just my personal gear. It's the personal equipment like sleeping bags and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, the small, the small bag is actually the, the combat pack uh, or whatever you call it, uh, which you could have with your essential stuff when you're out in the field. And then the large bag is called the tross or tross in Swedish or Germanian. It's a German word from the beginning, I suppose. And if you look it up on Wikipedia, uh, what tross means, uh, it's the well, it's it's a support chain for uh, for the company or for the whole uh, uh, regiment, whatever who is in combat. So uh, the Wikipedia article is really interesting because the wives would be the support. Uh, would be the baggage train, as they call it back then, I suppose. They would take care of all uh, all their soldiers' personal gear, and uh, they would haul them ar around uh, behind the fighting husbands. Then uh, we don't really actually have that uh, sort of thing going today, but it's exactly the same thing. So with the inch bag concept, with, where you have an "I'm never coming home" bag, you are not going to a bug application, or maybe you are going to a bug application, but you don't have a baggage train. You don't have, like we have, trucks with uh, where we put all our gear in and, uh, and just, you know, roll. Um, the support train uh, or the support chain is not, doesn't seem to be there with the inch bag concept. You're supposed to hike with all the gear on your back, which would work, but you would burn an extreme amount of calories and how will you replenish that long term? Uh, that's why I think it's definitely not feasible. So if you take the series alone, for example, uh, they lose a lot of weight in during the time they're out. And uh, actually one of them, I don't remember who this was, but uh, I calculated that he was burning 3000 calories of body fat per day uh, and although this uh, this one who actually won one of the seasons uh, he uh, got maybe uh, well I also calculated regarding his weight um, what he weighed before and after because he published that data and he lost a substantial amount of weight and uh, the only thing that I could uh, find that was a discrepancy be between how much body fat calories worth of body fat he lost and how many calories he ate that came to on average 500 kilocalories or 500 calories per day of uh, fish that is uh, this contestant ate and actually uh, that as a survival uh, uh, effort is uh, really impressive uh, to me actually because getting 500 kilocalories from nature with with uh, the limit amount, amount of gear they had and under those conditions obviously is very impressive and then you're thinking 500 kilocalories that's nothing where have i heard 500 calories before yeah well 500 calories per day is uh, what's called a very low calorie diet or a low calorie diet uh, and it's usually used for uh, for uh, dieting for losing weight but he was burning 3500 kilocalories per day basically and 3000 of them came from his own body fat so yeah so if you take that to the inch bag concept where do you keep all that food and for how long will you uh, do you expect to uh, go without finding real food it's it's a very limited pack even if it weighs like 30 or maybe 40 kilos uh, because you've packed everything so uh, hiking around with that would uh, burn a substantial amount of uh, calories and you would never be able to pack uh, that many calories in the inch bag to survive long term you maybe do it for a month but it's an inch bag only for a month 
or are you supposed to find a place or find places in between and find places I mean that you actually find real food already cooked food where you don't expend any energy or very little energy to acquire the calories because that's one of the main the most important things in a survival situation to acquire calories which uh, where you get the calories you get from acquiring them is uh, not the amount of calories you spend to get those calories because then you would have a zero sum game you know you would burn 500 calories to get 500 calories oh now you you're down to zero calories and yeah that was a wasted effort you obviously have to get more calories than uh, than you spend trying to get them to be on the plus side there of things so what I'm trying to do here uh, by showing my inch bags is that yeah they are actually inch bags if shit hit the fan uh, those are the bags that I will take but I will go to a bug out location which would be the garrison where everyone else is waiting and we are packing all the trucks with uh, you know all the other gear and food you know petrol or whatever everything which we have obviously so that's my take on the inch bag it's not realistic without the the other part of uh, of that thinking which would be the whole baggage train uh, the troughs from uh, from old days uh, and if all you're going to do with your own family is to hike out and never come home then uh, where is your baggage train where is your uh, where's the troughs unit that takes care of all the other stuff and all the other gear that is required for you to you know stay alive and uh, have food or whatever but what about my wife and child where do they go that's uh, if i'm off in the army with my inch bags and uh, the situation is that i'm never com coming home where does she go does she stay there or does she go somewhere else well that's uh, that's a story for another episode and uh, obviously i have a plan for that uh, or we have actually have a plan for this and yeah we have our country house and the country house is located uh, up north in Sweden uh, I'm obviously not going to say where it is um, but it's also close to the Norwegian border uh, so it would be easy to come here and also easy to uh, go to another country to a friendly neighbor so instead of focusing on gear alone, I'm, I want to motivate people to focus on uh, training with their gear uh, instead and knowing where the limits are and uh, what can be done, what is feasible and what is not. Because I think most people would, uh, would quickly realize that hiking around with all that gear and the limited amount of calories they have uh, would be pretty hard after a while and obviously if you have been hiking a lot and like I've hiked a lot off trail um, then yeah that, that you quickly realize how many calories you would need um, before you the, the starvation and the calorie deficit is pretty pretty nasty uh, so it would definitely uh, take a toll on you psychologically mentally that you uh, you would feel a certain uh, level of apathy, which uh, is not good if you're trying to run away from something, obviously. Um, so that's why I don't like the inch bag concept. So one of my next episodes will be called Getting Started, which uh, will be a new mini series uh, about getting started with uh, everything that I do. I had some difficulty finding uh, <laughs> the end the last part of this uh, sentence so it's called it getting started that's uh, basically what it would be so it's not getting started with hiking it's not getting started with uh, you know backpacking uh, it's getting started with uh, a more minimalistic uh, kind of uh, survival evasion bug out prepping kind of thing where you uh, where I, I will cover a lot of uh, what I like to do which is uh, uh, off-trail hiking and uh, land navigation with the map and compass and uh, nighttime land navigation 
uh, and especially nighttime land navigation with uh, with night vision optics. Uh, I really like uh, doing stuff at night, so uh, the problem is that the cameras don't really work very well, and I won't be able to take that big halogen lamp with me everywhere. 500 watts is a bit difficult to find if you can't plug it in somewhere. So the whole point of the Getting Started series uh, will be to uh, give some tips on how to start with maybe bushcrafting for instance. Or how to start with this kind of uh, outdoor life or minimalistic outdoor life. Uh, if you don't want to do uh, high tech, very expensive uh, uh, backpacking for instance or trail hiking. I hope uh, that would be interesting. Well, uh, now let's uh, let's get something to eat. So, um, this ration pack didn't contain uh, uh, this flameless heater bag, so I just added the Orifo flameless heater. So an accessory bag here, uh, this uh, sugar and uh, this is chewing gum. Yeah, V6 chewing gum. You know, storm matches in this one. Um, so it's obviously, I don't know if you Irish actually, if you drink tea or uh, more coffee. Uh, there's a uh, smooth Kenko coffee. Freeze dried instant coffee, okay, so it's just freeze dried instant, good. Uh, because if it would have been like a cappuccino or something, it's not really my thing. So that's good. But there are two tea bags, I suppose. Sorry about the smoke, and I'm getting all smoked up here. Um, but it's raining, so yeah, I think I will keep it going. Yeah, anyway, cool. There's a spoon. A really oh, nice spoon there, too. Some candy, that's always good to have. And I would obviously, I would recommend uh, that maybe if you want to have more detail on the contents of this one, that you check out, uh, you know, uh, Crazy Russian Hacker or Tara Cool or, or Taros Cool. Sorry, I forgot his name. Uh, check out his channel because I think he actually demonstrates one of these uh, Russian packs. Um, so a black currant beverage powder, um, ah, oat biscuits, golden oat, I love oat biscuits, um, dark chocolate oat biscuit, so, and here's a familiar thing, the Orifa for tuna bag, it actually, yeah, actually, I think this, the Swedish one, even if it's freeze-dried, it, I think it contains, most of them at least contain one of these tuna, you know, soft canned tuna bags. I don't know why they put it there. Maybe some like tuna. Tuna and light mayonnaise. Uh, yeah. Some of these squeegee bottles. This is what my son needs. So, yeah, okay. It's fruit. That's cool. Peanuts in a can. That's uh, exciting. You can obviously use a can for something. Also, and peanut butter. That's that's super good. Napkins, a whole uh, a whole uh, box of it, a whole pack of napkins. And uh, sports drink and uh, cho hot chocolate. Uh, not a sport drink, but a hot chocolate. Uh, so some kind of energy bar here. Ah, date and banana. That's nice. And then we get to the the meals. So there are so there are four bags in this one. This is pretty cool. So here's a uh, rice pudding. Chunky chicken and vegetable soup. 
pork curry Nepalese style. Beans, bacon, potato in tomato sauce. That sounds nice, actually. So there were four in this one. How many calories is it in one of these? Hmm, does not say. So this is obviously something that you eat as a dessert, rice pudding, I suppose. Maybe beans, bacon, or tomato sauce. This is a, sounds like a British uh, uh, your breakfast. British breakfasts are really nice because they are like, cooked food. So maybe that's why all of these are, they're actually three meals. Three meals and a dessert. That's what it is, I suppose. Cool. So I think I will have this one, chunky chicken and vegetable soup. So the, the, these memories are, uh, have expired uh, just a year ago, so I don't think there's any issue with it. Uh, they're well packed and sealed and everything. No punctures on the bags. So uh, I think that would be really great to have in a few episodes to come. So do Irish also use these Orifo bags, the heater bags, or something else? It looks like it looks like it would fit in there. So So this is uh, chunky chicken and vegetable soup. Mm. Mm. Okay, it's interesting. It's uh, yeah, small. Yeah, it's like a, I don't know if it's really a soup. It's thicker than a soup anyway, so. I mean, it's a pretty mild uh, chicken. It's, uh, yeah, it's completely all right. Could eat this a lot, no problem. Hmm? Past due date, uh, no funny taste or anything. I would guess that it tastes like, uh, like a fresh one. So thumbs up or thumbs down or uh, share and subscribe and all that stuff. And I see you uh, in the next episode. This is Mike out.